You can also add activities. This is where the interactive element comes in. You can do assignments right from within Moodle. So if you wanted them to type a paper, instead of them printing that out and sending that to you or bringing it into class, I just click on assignment. I can make a name for it. So we're gonna call this the introduction essay. So and we can even put it in a description. So you have one week to complete the assignment, introduce yourself with three relevant facts. We've all done that assignment before. And you can see I can put the description once again right on the course page if I want to. Now assignments have a little bit more uh, settings that you can choose between than just like a file that you're uploading. So assignments, this is gonna say, when do you wanna allow submissions from and to? So if I want this to open up later in the week, let's say I wanna do this on the 13th, it will not open up until the 13th. So that assignment will not be able to be submitted. So you can't have somebody just blow through the entire course. Also due dates, if I wanna give them maybe a week, so I said 13th, we'll give them to the 20th, enable that, and then a cutoff date. So if I want to know what something is inside Moodle, you'll see these little tiny question marks all throughout here. If I am unclear what's the difference between due date and cutoff date, I just click on that little question mark and it will tell you exactly what it does. So if set, the assignment will not accept submissions after this date without an extension. So not just the due date, this is the last date that they can absolutely submit that assignment. You can also choose how you want that assignment to be submitted, whether it's a file that they actually upload or whether they copy and paste it into a text box. And you can allow both. So it's really up to how you design your class and what your style is. And also the maximum number of files that they can upload. So if I was having them do a project where they upload a Word document, maybe a PowerPoint that they've made, or a movie file that they've made, I can choose how many files can they actually upload. And then what's the limit for what they can upload. The biggest thing in here is, is feedback types. I get this question retroactively after people have already created the assignment quite a bit, where they go, I've downloaded this Word assignment from the student and I've written feedback with track changes and comments. How do I re-upload it? The answer to that is you have to turn this on when you're making the assignment, or at least go back and edit it inside the assignment details itself. And that's feedback types. As a default, I get in the habit of just turning these all on. That means if I don't use it, it's still not going to show up, but it gives me as the instructor the ability to at least have those feedback types available to me. I don't have to root through and figure out where was this to turn on again. This allows me to upload the file back for feedback. So as I give them a grade, I can give them that feedback in a file. You also have group submission settings. Now groups can sometimes get faculty into trouble a little bit. When you're setting groups, it's not just for a group project, it's different groups for the entire course. So if I have a group for students and I have one for teaching assistants is a good way of using groups. You don't necessarily wanna use groups too much. I find it tends to, to make things a little bit more confusing because you have to remember to add your groups into every single assignment. So I typically will leave that collapse just like that. When I have everything set for my assignment, here's grade. I'm gonna do 100 points. I'm gonna do a simple grading uh, method so that way I can just put the points right in. And just like that, I now have some place that students can go and see the introductory essay. And uh, as of the 13th, I believe is what we set, they can be able to submit assignments in. Now, once people have this up and you have people submitting assignments in there, this screen here shows me how many people have submitted and how many actually still need to be graded. So I don't have a stack of papers anymore. I have a list for me. I can see there's one participant. There's nine days left on it. The due date's on the 20th. And I can even view and grade all the submissions right from that screen. And so anybody that's inside the course that has submitted, I'll see their name here, and I'll be able to add, quickly add a grade in. Now again, I'm using my breadcrumb trail just to go back to iEngage demo. If I scroll down here, here's my introduction essay. And you notice this is starting to get a little bit cluttered up here because there's a lot of different activities. You can remove things out of here. So if I find that this assignment or this resource is no longer needed, I just click edit, hit delete, hit yes, and it deletes it all out there. Now, if there's things that I wanna keep in there but I don't necessarily want students to see, I can use the hide ability. So if I click edit here and click hide, you're gonna see this picture of the eyeball quite commonly. You'll notice it turned light gray. That means I can see it as the instructor, but the students cannot. Let's go under activity again. You can also do things like attendance if you want to take attendance for it. It does not automatically do it, it just gives you the ability to mark off who is there for attendance. There's things for chats. Um, forum I find is quite useful. Forum allows you to talk with students and students to talk with each other. 
So maybe I wanted to, instead of doing an assignment, I wanted to do an introduction forum. And I could even put it in here, use this forum to introduce yourself to the class. What's nice about all of these assignments and all of these different activities you can do is that they go automatically into the gradebook. So I don't have to manually import each individual grade in, create categories. As I'm creating them, they're creating different uh, entries inside the gradebook itself. Now again, you have different types of settings for forum. So I can talk about subscription. Uh, is it optional or do they have to be subscribed to their own forum post? I can talk about what kind of grade and also what kind of grade category. And we're gonna go into the grade book in a lot more detail, but you can actually add categories. I'm gonna put this one in participation. Hit save and display. And now I can add a discussion topic. Click this and I'm going to say this is the favorite color. You might wanna go a little bit more in detail with your discussion forums, but you get the idea that I'm, I'm putting a prompt inside here. So uh, describe your favorite color how you came to that choice and what it means to you. You can also add where you yourself are getting a copy of, of the post to that forum. Any attachments you want to do, post to the forum. There we go. So now I have a discussion forum right in there and people can reply. So they just hit reply, type in their own message that they want to put a uh, reply to it post of the forum and now we have a full discussion going on. So you can see how you, you can really start being interactive with a lot of these elements inside here. So I'm going to click up right back on my breadcrumb trail and bring me back.